Good, happy Wednesday evening, May 27, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Wednesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Wednesday evening, so let's begin. First step, COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know information. Let's take a look at that information right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 4,231 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 175,276 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 214 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 421 number of people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 100,544 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. This map of New Hampshire right here shows you where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 425. And this map of New Hampshire shows you where total co cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester, 1051. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. The first chart here, new cases each day in New Hampshire. In the purple, new positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, new hospitalizations. And in the red, are the deaths. This chart here, current cases. In the purple, current COVID-19 cases. And in the orange, current hospitalizations. In this chart here, total cases. In the purple, total COVID-19 cases. In the orange, total hospitalizations. In the red, deaths. And then the blue, recovered. In this chart here, age group of cases. Female and male of cases. And risk information. In this chart here, race slash ethnicity of cases, hospitalizations, deaths, and percent of New Hampshire population. And your common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, and difficult breathing. How it spreads. And prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Death of five-year-old Laconia boy on Christmas Eve ruled hom homicide, AG says. At the time of death, the boy was in a home with several other family members, officials say. No charges have been filed in the case. Pool business booming during stay-at-home order. Businesses say they're selling out of pools and supplies. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Chapel Tractor has been in our family since 1955, when great-grandfather Burley and grandfather George decided... At Empire Pools and Hot Tubs in Concord, Memorial Day weekend is usually their busiest time of the year. But in 28 years in the business, Jeff Huberty has never seen anything like this. We are totally sold out of above-ground pools for the season. Our installation schedule is in late August. We can't get pools from the manufacturers because they can't make any more. Huberty says it's not just pools. They're also having trouble keeping their shelves stocked. We've run out of chemicals. We're waiting for deliveries this week. So right now we have very little uh, to sell. Huberty adding they're taking steps to keep everyone safe, allowing no more than four people inside the store at a time and requiring people to wear masks. Still, that doesn't deter the customer. Yesterday we had probably 40 people 
waiting six feet apart in line to get into the store. A lot of new customers that I've never seen before. We're definitely seeing a lot of new people. At Marquette Pools and Spas and Hooks It, it's a similar story. I definitely think there's been a huge increase um, with everyone wanting to stay home for their staycations this year. So there's a huge increase in sales. Jenna Paquette says that the customers who've been on the fence about getting a pool or a spa are deciding now is the time. They're like, well, we're going to stay home a lot this year. We know we're going to be home, so we want to enjoy the yard. I also spoke to a company that delivers pool water. The owner says they have four or five trucks normally on the road. He says they could double their fleet and still not keep up with demand. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Historic SpaceX astronaut launch scrubbed. SpaceX and NASA have scrubbed Wednesday's attempt at launching astronauts from American soil for the first time since 2011. The scrub come after fueling of the Falcon 9 rocket had already begun. The next attempt launch will come Saturday at 3.22 p.m. If the launch is also scrubbed, the next attempt would be Sunday at 3 p.m. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Wednesday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Wednesday evening. Your Dow Jones Industrial Average closed in the green one up. Your Nasdaq closed in the green one up. S&P 500 closed in the green one up. Gold closed in the red one down. Oil closed in the red one down. U.S. 10 year closed flat. Your factory was closed in the red one down. And BIX closed in the red one down. Dow rallies more than 500 points for the first second day and closes above 25,000 for the first time since March. Stocks rose for the second day on Wednesday as Wall Street grew more optimistic about the economy reopening. Shares of companies that benefit from the economy restart led the way. Four officers fired after unarmed black man's death. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. You had a safe and happy Memorial Day weekend with family and loved ones, and we have a lot to get to tonight. The U.S. nearing that very difficult milestone with coronavirus, but we're going to begin here this evening with tension building tonight in Minneapolis after an unarmed black man died after being arrested and pinned to the ground by an officer. He can be heard on the video saying, I can't breathe. Tonight, four police officers have now been fired, a witness recording the horrific incident. The handcuffed man on the ground, an officer's knee on his neck there. The man can be heard repeating over and over that he could not breathe. The video lasts about 10 minutes. He was unresponsive when an ambulance finally arrived, and tonight, members of the community have begun to gather at a makeshift memorial. Protesters are also now gathering, and the mayor of that city tonight outraged, saying that the officer in the video, quote, failed in the most basic human sense. ABC's Alex Perez leads us off from Minneapolis, and we warn you, the video is very difficult to watch. Please! Please, I can't breathe! Please, man! Please, man! Tonight, the black man in this horrifying video on the ground and in handcuffs is dead. The white officer with his knee on his neck, along with three other officers, all fired. And the FBI is investigating. We're not resisting arrest or nothing. The roughly 10-minute video begins after police have the man, identified by a lawyer for family members as George Floyd, on the ground Monday night. Police say Floyd was unarmed, suspected of trying to pass a forged check at a convenience store, and also appeared to be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. His nose is bleeding. 
About five minutes into the video, Floyd appears to lose consciousness. Bystanders urging police to check his pulse. Let me see your pulse. But the officer does not get up. More than seven minutes into the video, EMTs arrive on the scene and check his pulse. The officer's knee still on Floyd's neck. Floyd had worked as a security guard at a Minneapolis restaurant for more than five years. Police say he died at a nearby hospital. Their statement last night said he resisted officers. They handcuffed him and, quote, noted he appeared to be suffering medical distress. Being black in America should not be a death sentence. This officer failed in the most basic human sense. I can breathe. Those words, I can't breathe, reminiscent of the Eric Garner case. In 2014, he said those same words. He died after a controversial arrest in New York City that set off nationwide protests. Because we have the video, we know the truth. We can see with our own eyes what happened. All right, so let's get to Alex Perez in Minneapolis tonight. And Alex, we know the FBI is now investigating. We can see the crowd there gathering behind you. And you've learned tonight the officers who were fired were, in fact, wearing body cameras. Yeah, David, first I wanted to show you that crowd behind me, massive turnout for this protest here tonight. Yes, those officers were, in fact, wearing body cameras. Federal investigators are now working to determine if they violated Floyd's rights and whether they should face federal charges. David? All right, Alex Perez leading us off tonight. Alex, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And thank you for watching this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up later on this evening. Good night and bye.